Hello website friends, Pauline here. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the pros and cons that you might find when you're choosing between WordPress, Card and Squarespace for your website tool. I'll say a bit more in a moment why I'm talking about those. But generally, when people come to me and they say they're overwhelmed with their website and they don't know where to start, choosing the underlying technology is a big reason. So I'm here to give you a guide on what you should consider and the uh, circumstances under which these tools might be right for you. So today it's a very simple schedule. I'm going to talk simply about the pros and cons of each of WordPress and then Squarespace and then card.co. I am Pauline Wiles. If we haven't met, you can come and find out more about me at paulinewiles.com. Always very happy to hear from you there. My purpose in sharing this video with you and making content like this is I really want you to know that you have choices. These days, there are a lot of website tools available. Most of them are very strong. So you have great choices and great options. And of course, that can bring a dilemma with it as well. It's super important for you to realize there is no best solution. What is best for your relative or your best friend may not be right for you. It depends very heavily on your needs, your personality, your comfort level with technology, and also your budget and your appetite for being involved on an ongoing basis with looking after your website. So please don't feel that anyone who tells you what's best necessarily knows what they're talking about unless they've discussed with you where you're coming from. And then it's really important to know that a lot of advice online about building your website is coming from people who do make commissions if you make a purchase by following one of their links. Now, that's just the way of the world. Um, there's still plenty of great impartial advice available, but it's well worth you knowing that the person who's giving you advice may be making commission from you. So to clarify and to be transparent, I decided to talk about these three website tools because I've used all three of them extensively. I do have another video where I've played around with uh, some low cost website builders, but these are the three that I've really used to the point where I feel qualified to tell you the pros and cons. Now, at the moment, my website is using WordPress. I've been on WordPress for, oh, years and years and years. I am in the middle of moving it to Squarespace. So for now, I'm on WordPress. That's why I feel qualified to talk about it. I'm moving to Squarespace soon. And I am an affiliate for Card. I make a small amount when you uh, purchase from Card using my link and also for Squarespace where my commission is more significant. Nonetheless, I'm here because I want you to have more information about making a great choice for you. And my priority is that you end up with the best website tool for your needs, um, not for me to make commission from the advice that I give you. So, on we go. WordPress. Firstly, what are the circumstances and the reasons why WordPress might be right for you? My glasses on. So WordPress is an incredibly popular platform and by popular, I mean widely used. Um, we hear that millions and millions of websites, something like 60 million websites use WordPress. And so it's uh, a very common tool. There's a lot of functionality. And in fact, there are people all over the world who make it their um, business or their hobby to develop extra functionality that sits on WordPress. So WordPress has a lot of really impressive features. If there's something additional that you need your website to do for you, there's a good chance that somebody has built some WordPress um, capability for that. If blogging is your main reason for being in business or your main reason for having a website, then WordPress is a really, really strong contender. WordPress got started as a blogging platform. And so I think it's arguable that WordPress really is a very, very strong choice for you 
if you want to run a very sophisticated blog and uh, have all the control that that implies. Equally, people come to me with fairly complex websites. They're already using WordPress and they already have some level of comfort or tolerance with using the tool. So I spoke to somebody quite recently and I ended up saying, just stay on WordPress. The drama of switching for this individual simply wouldn't be worth it. So if you've been on WordPress for years and you've got some level of familiarity with it and you've got lots and lots of content and blog posts on there, it may be worth you just sticking where you're already um, online. And equally, if you are comfortable with technology, you're comfortable with making your own updates and backups and taking care of your website, or you have somebody in place who will do that for you, you're comfortable with them and you're okay with what they're charging you, then you've got an important aspect of WordPress covered. Now, why might WordPress not be right for you? And let me be clear here, when I started my web design business, I decided I was not offering WordPress sites to clients. That's despite my own website being on WordPress for years and years. My belief is if you're not very technical and you're not comfortable at digging around behind the scenes and configuring things, WordPress is really quite confusing to use. There are better solutions for you. Now, even though the underlying WordPress software is uh, free or open source, it will still cost you money to have a WordPress website. So if you want a reasonably professional looking website with your own domain name and uh, no adverts and that kind of thing, you will have to pay money for hosting, which is the name for the online space where your website actually lives. And then there are also plenty of cases where you'll need to pay for some extra functionality in WordPress, often called a plugin or even a theme, so that you can get your website looking and working the way you want. Now, the bullet point that's hidden here, it says security concerns. I argue that because WordPress is so widely used, um, bits and pieces are added and contributed by folks from all over the world um, with very different backgrounds and motives. I argue that WordPress is more of a security target than some other platforms. WordPress needs a lot of hands-on care. So almost every week, if not more often, you will get notified that a plugin needs to be updated. The WordPress version itself updates. And each time that happens, you should be backing up your site, updating your various bits and pieces, and then testing everything thoroughly. That is... Uh, frankly, more than I want to sign up for. I suspect it might be more than you want to sign up for. And so this is where you might well end up paying somebody to take care of your WordPress site for you. That can be expensive. $50 a month is not unusual. And that might be something you don't realize when you cheerfully sign up for WordPress. These days, your website needs something called an SSL certificate. That's a security designation, and it reassures internet browsers that when a visitor comes to your site, their information is treated securely. Now, it doesn't matter if you're not processing information or taking credit cards or any of that stuff. You need one of these certificates, and it may not come as standard with your WordPress configuration. Some platforms may in fact charge you extra for that. I feel they shouldn't, but in any case, just know that you might have to keep an eye on SSL for WordPress. Finally, on WordPress considerations, SEO is search engine optimization. That's the expression we use for um, tactics on your website to encourage Google to bring you traffic. WordPress has great options for SEO, but you may not find that they're all available as standard. You may end up having to configure an extra plugin or tool for that, and you may end up spending money to get the functions that you need there. So once again, I have serious concerns about WordPress. If you're not especially technical and you don't want to pay someone to do it for you, then I think there are real concerns um, that I would suggest don't jump into WordPress without doing some other research first. What might your other options be? 
Well, Squarespace, that's where my website will end up uh, in the next few weeks. I'm moving it right now. So why might Squarespace be right for you? This is an all-in-one piece of website technology uh, where you don't have to buy hosting separately. You don't have to install and configure things bit by bit. And there is central support. So if you like the idea of a seamless uh, kind of package solution, Squarespace is worth a look. Squarespace, I would say, does not have the rich breadth of features that WordPress can offer you. But everything that is available is very good, it's very well tested, and for most people's needs, whether you're blogging or you have um, a very simple online store, you want to offer appointment scheduling to your clients, most of what you need will be um, available without further hassle on Squarespace. Their design sensibility is especially strong. I've certainly seen some ugly Squarespace websites that people have built themselves, but I would suggest it's easier to get a site that looks good. And in my opinion, because Squarespace is not quite as um, wide in what you can configure as WordPress, I think it's easier to learn and easier to use. That security certificate that I mentioned, that comes as standard on your Squarespace website. And the features for search engine optimization are made very easy for you, very straightforward as well. Once again, Squarespace is an individual company. They have a support team. There is somebody you can reach out to if you need help. And if you want to go one step further and hire a professional to help you build or maintain your Squarespace website, there are plenty of excellent people available that you can work with. Now, Squarespace may not be a good choice for you. If your business is blogging, I said this already with WordPress, if blogging is really the reason you're online and you need a very sophisticated, um, extensive blog, I'm not sure I would point you in the direction of Squarespace. Equally, Squarespace is fine if you have a simple online store with just a few products, but if your whole business is around selling things and you need sophisticated shop management tools, again, I don't think Squarespace is necessarily your best choice. Squarespace is strong because there are several measures in place to um, protect us from ourselves. And what I mean by that is, as a relatively inexperienced website designer, there are some mistakes that you might make and some design choices that might trip you up. And frankly, Squarespace has taken some of those decisions away from you. Now, that's fine if you don't want the ability to tinker around behind the scenes, if you don't enjoy getting um, under the hood or under the bonnet, as we say in some countries. Um, that's all fine, but do know that if you do want to be able to configure every last detail, then you may need to delve into some code to get Squarespace to do exactly what you want and to look exactly what you want. And then be aware the basic Squarespace plan starts from about 12 US dollars a month. There may be some features that will push you up a level in terms of the plan that you need. So the shop is one of them. If you run a restaurant, you want to integrate somewhere with Open Table, or even for the rest of us who maybe want a pop up message to appear on a website. These are all uh, features that could mean that you need to spend more than you realize with Squarespace. And then the last tool I want to talk about today is card.co. Card is a really great choice for you if you want a very simple website of a very limited scope. So Card helps you create a very sleek, modern design. You start with a template, but you're not actually tied to that. And Card comes to you at a very reasonable cost. So because you're keeping your site simple and because it is not a huge website tool, um, the free plan is quite good. But for most clients, I recommend the paid plan that is currently 19 US dollars a year. That's one nine. And yes, that's per year, not per month. 
Uh, card brings you your security certificate, the SSL certificate um, as standard, nothing extra for you to do there. And it has some really nice features and integrations. You can include simple sign up forms, simple PayPal buttons, um, several really nice bits and pieces and forms come as an option for you in card uh, without spending more once you're on one of the paid plans. Card is a small company. They do have a central support desk for you. My experience has been that that support's been excellent. It's been very fast and they've understood exactly what I'm asking and what I need. So Card is a really nice choice if you want a very simple website with not too many pages. What do I mean by too many pages? Well, depending on the tricks you use, I re really wouldn't go beyond about seven or eight pages on Card. Card, in fact, advertises as a one page site builder. Now, with a bit of know how, you can get your website to display as if it does have multiple pages, but I would not push it beyond that kind of seven or eight page um, limit. That means that Card doesn't bother to offer things like drop down menus. You're not supposed to be creating a complex site structure, so your visitors are going to navigate around using buttons instead. And equally, Card does not offer a blogging uh, feature. Nothing to stop you posting bits of news on one of your website pages. Nothing to stop you linking to articles and guest blog posts that you've written elsewhere. But don't expect to have your own blog within the Card platform. Card does offer you some ways of talking to the search engines, so SEO tools. But it's fair to say they're more limited than on Squarespace or on WordPress because it's a very simple website and the search engines will actually see your site as one page. That also means that the analysis you'll be able to do in terms of your website traffic and which parts of your website people are visiting, that's going to be more limited as well. Also, if you do find that you need some help, you want to reach out and hire someone to either build your card website for you or help you with it, you will have less choice in terms of the professional designers who work with card. So card has many strengths, but its drawbacks are it's really only intended if your website is super simple. To summarize all this, the main thing I want you to know is you have choices. Don't believe anyone who says there's really only one um, dominant choice for your website tool. What is best for you absolutely depends on your personality, your capabilities, your enthusiasm for the whole thing, and of course, what it is that you need your website to do. So it's well worth getting uh, clear on these aspects before you dive in and start using a tool. And once again, just be aware that some of the people giving you advice are going to make affiliate commissions when you click on their links and buy something. Now, in terms of your personality and your preferences, I offer more advice on deciding that in my website starter kit. It's a free download. You can get it here. And that will help you tease out some of these aspects like your design skills and your willingness to play with technology. If you're interested in hiring me to create your website for you, either using Squarespace or Card, I do offer a free consultation. I'm very happy to chat with you about your project, figure out what the best solution might be for you. And of course, there's never any pressure in that conversation. In any case, I am Pauline Wiles. Come find me at my website, let me know if you have questions, and I hope this helps you narrow down your choices for the website technology that's best for you.